start the recording. Yeah, okay, awesome, awesome. So this is, we don't know which episode it is. Well, actually, no, we do, we do now. It's episode two. It's episode two. It's episode two. <laughs> yep, uh, earlier we didn't know which episode right. we should talk about, because I'm in two of them, right? I'm in two episodes. So you're... Oh, I'm in just, I'm in just in two. Only in episode two. Right? Okay, so okay. then, yeah, it's a good thing we picked that one. Then. <laughs> yep. Okay, awesome. Yep, so that makes so, sense. Um, there we go. So real quick here, um, my name is Brad Allen, and I am a filmmaker, photographer, um, actor, and I play the main character in the Crusader's Tale series. And uh, we are, uh, we're starting a podcast here about that. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Melvin. I... I'm a filmmaker at heart. <laughs> I haven't made a film yet, but um, no, I've for I've been I've been making videos and stuff since like nine or ten years old, kind of around that age. So I've always had that kind of creative like inspiration for me, and it, it comes and goes. But when I heard Brad was making a film, I was like, hell yeah, I wanna I wanna be a part of that project. For sure. So that's why I'm here. But um, yeah, as Brad said, each episode is gonna be a little bit different. Um, not only in the episode that Brad's going to be talking about, but also just what, what makes us creative? What makes us unique? What, what kind of perspective are we going to have? And I think that's interesting for the type of film he's making, because the way it's going to feel for me, it's going to be different for the way, um, the other people will, they'll get, they'll get a different inspiration from it. So we'll definitely, I think, I think this is a creative idea. And I'm glad to be a part of it. So I'm just looking through the episode right now. We're glad to have you here. I appreciate that. Oh, no worries, man. The viewers, uh, listeners benefit as well, real quick. Uh, Melvin and I, uh, we were friends in college. We met there through friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, been friends for a while that way. So that is kind of where our uh, creative visions merged, uh, was there, and uh, have stayed well, in we were, we were both comm majors. For sure. But, um... Yeah, yeah. We were in different emphases. Emphasize. Yeah, because I was journalism and you were, remind me again? I was, uh, what is it? Electronic media. That's, That's what right. it is. That's yep. right. I forgot the name of, of what yep. it was. Because, like, every time I told someone what electronic media was, they, they didn't know. They had kind of had an idea, but I kind of had to fill in the blanks there. For sure. And that makes sense. Yep. Sometimes it's like that. But, uh, yeah, like, electronic media just kind of, it, it just gave a broad perspective of communication with technology, essentially, you know, uh, through newspapers and journals, like or like magazines, things like that. Um, you know, it just kind of gave a broad perspective, but then, yeah, it included like more video classes in the last two years. That's pretty much what it is. But um, I guess, yeah, tell me a little bit about your journey through college. I guess I never asked you. Yeah, so... Um... You know, kind of real brief on how, that sort of thing. Yeah, how was how was how was journalism for you? It was it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was at times stressful, and there was just a lot of work, a lot of hard work, a lot of long hours. I mean, a lot of writing stories, going to interview people, taking photos, right. packaging that into a uh, story. You know, based on events or uh, updates at the school, construction even that was going on, or when events played a role. Okay. Um, just oh. a lot of interviews, a lot of long hours of. Putting that together, writing. Cool. I, I spent so much time in college just oh. in the office. Oh, really? That was like a cool. lot of my college experience was actually working. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Which is different than self. So um, I'll, I'll ask one question. I'll answer the question. You'll also answer the question. We're going to pick sure. a, a favorite class from that um, that major. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. That so not major? just your favorite class. Yeah, from the journalism major. Is, my is that is, Okay, yeah. My favorite class would be the filmmaking class that we took. Oh, really? Screenwriting. Okay, screenwriting. That yeah, we did take favorite. that together, didn't we? Yeah. That, that Were we in the same class, class with the same teacher? Yeah. Cool, yeah, we, cool, uh, yeah. We, we, uh, yeah, we were, we were in there. We, uh, we did a group project about Shrek. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> did, you, you did that with John, right? We did. I thought, weren't you in the group? Was group? I in that? I don't remember if I was That's in that. That's right, no, me and John did it, but then uh -huh. you were... Um, I did something you else. Might have been with Jack or yeah, I did, I did it with someone else. That's but yeah, okay. no, okay, cool, cool. Thank you for bringing that. Okay, well, my favorite class happens to be in the same field, but you can not answer the one from your from journalism. So from journalism, yeah. I would say uh, page design. Page design? Was the one that was most fun okay. for me. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
I think figuring out our backgrounds and then just like seeing the film, I think that gives a interesting perspective. So I, uh, for me, it's um, great moments in cinema. So it was just kind of, it was like historical, but it was also talking about movies and just like from the beginning of like making the movie was impressive in and of itself. It was new technology, you know, it was just For sure. it, movies was always like a people pleaser, like, wow, like you just large groups of people just in, enjoying it in this, in the same place. I don't know why that's just so that's so cool to me but i i got to experience a lot of cool movies uh taxi driver was a really cool movie yes um was. actually one of my favorite movies that's super obscure is called um m um and it's i absolutely love that movie um but it's like a, this weird 1930s like german film and i but i actually absolutely love it so that, that sounds I, interesting yeah yeah no it was, it was a great it was a great uh great class i absolutely love it but yeah awesome. for me my favorite class was in the field um yours just was but i, I i'm glad you you brought up screenwriting it was a fun class so i guess so um one question about screenwriting how did making that um because remember that final project it was like make the first act how did that feel versus this um this uh project of yours and i guess you can you could try to relate it to episode two if you can but you don't have to um yeah, I'll, I'll do my best here. I mean, it was, um, so how it relates screenwriting. Yeah, project, what did the class feel like versus this project? Yeah, so the class, um, it was very structured. You know, they wanted you to follow mm. the three part structure. Yeah, because if you were selling it to Hollywood, yeah, that, like, they wouldn't accept anything else. Right, so it has to have the, what's called the, like, the setup, and then the fun and games, mm -hmm. and then the midpoint, and then the dark night of the soul, and then the climax, and then happy end. Mm. Um, you know, and we followed that with the first act. It was very structured and informative, and it felt kind of like an essay, but it was still really fun. Okay. Versus the film projects that I do, I still follow the structure, but um, because we're writing our own thing versus rewriting something that's already been done, because that's what mm. it was. We were rewriting a famous script with our own dialogue. Mm. So it, it, when I'm doing it myself, it's a good guide to make sure I'm in the right direction, but I like doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. It's like create. So no, I, I, I know what you're saying. So what yeah. you're saying is that since you're doing a lot of this stuff yourself, you can kind of, it's like, it's like interpreting your own language. It's encrypted, it, you know, it's just having your own, cause I, I get it with me. Like yeah. I, I take notes in a very specific way throughout the day. And I'm uh -huh. sure a lot of people are too, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm sure if you were ever working in a project with other people, you know, like if you were making like an indie film or something like that, you know, you'd have to, how would it, how would you feel if you had to actually like make, you know, stick by the rules? Would that, would that kind of be a drag or um, would it be a fun challenge for you? I think a fun challenge is the okay. best way to put it. Like cool. Every project has been challenging in its own ways, but that's not a bad thing. Um, it makes you better by having, uh, having to overcome a barrier. Mm. It, it makes you better. Wow, you know, I, mean, I love that. I love that you're you're inspiring me. You're like Tony Robbins. I love that. <laughs> oh, God, I love that about you. Uh, so I'm watching yeah. through the episode right now. Sure. Um, I'm recognizing. So I remember now because yes, I was only in one episode, but I helped film more than one episode. Correct. So I'm seeing some shots here. I don't know if they were my own, but I did attempt to. Um, film some of these so some of them some of the shots are in here so the one that that we're watching right now on the screen from episode two mm -hmm. um you were definitely there that day i think that was um i think that was either rob that had the camera in his hands or it might have been there was multiple Lisa. people yeah there was a lot of people with yeah. cameras and different stuff i know one shot specifically was not mine because it someone was walking backwards yeah um and someone else was pulling was it i don't know i don't think it was me i think it was, it was it, someone else it was Lisa. but yes someone was like looking forward guiding the person holding the camera who was walking back it was amanda and Alyssa together yeah it, it was those two so i remember yeah. that so it's like some of these shots you're just like you know of course if you're just a viewer you're not going to pay attention to that but it's just a nice little detail yeah, it's like, because you see, like, oh, here's where my hand was, and okay, well, I've seen what other people did. Because, again, we shot this in a 
kind of nature setting and that's yes. a very that's a very difficult those are very difficult scenes to shoot and, and that's something i never would have thought of myself that like oh yeah like nature shooting in a park like you can get a lot of cool stuff in there but yeah like because like what if we were just like in a sidewalk like it'd be different. yeah it'd be, <laughs> I, I wouldn't need someone helping me walk backwards i could just do that myself it's different if you have a a literal tree trunk behind your yeah feet yeah just like over. a bunch of so it's just yeah it's yeah. you picked a really hard setting but i'm impressed with how some of these shots look it was a welcome challenge so that's something about the intro scene yeah. and i know i thought it was just nice just them talking and walking around and then also tell me brad am i am i sounding perfect perfecto your, your or, levels are good oh my levels, levels are, good? are good okay yep. awesome thank we're, you we're doing good on the levels thank you here. great teamwork yeah so anyways i'm going to my wonderful scene um Dazar. that's my name right it's Dazar. Dazar. okay why don't you give me a little bit about the creation of this character yes how like did anything was it just like you needed a character or were you inspired by a real life person or someone you know or like someone in fiction was it just yeah. um, anything interesting about Dazar? give me one Dazar fun fact yeah let me um let me try to recall exactly. So, Dazar Ibrahim is mm -hmm. the character. Um, he is um, a, a village leader in, in the Holy Land in a community that uh, has, has seen a lot of violence and stuff like that. He's, he's a peaceful person, but he's seen war and he's seen the horrors of it. And when he meets the main characters, you know, he's communicating not only that they need help and protection, but also just... He personifies how deadly the Crusades really were. Um, and the people that got caught in the middle, that were innocent, that weren't fighting, they're the ones that really suffered the most over religious conflicts. And he kind of symbolizes that as a character. Um, you know, the inspiration behind that was that as I was writing the story and I was trying to share a portion of the story in this episode where William and Fadi encounter a serious danger and Basically, it has to put them forward in the story where they have survived something that they maybe should not have because they, it's a dangerous set, you know, so I knew there was so, going to be a story. Okay, um, so I guess maybe you should tell me a little bit about episode one. Yeah. Because yeah. you're saying that there's more danger ahead. They had danger before in the previous episode, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So let can we get some of that information yeah. to help? Yeah. Let's let's do yeah, that for sure. So um, tell episode, me a little bit about episode one. Yeah. So episode one, um, I'm gonna give you the whole series in in a brief blur. All right. You know? Yeah. Give me. Yeah. Give me like a, a like you know like those newspaper reviews right. at the bottom. Give yeah. me. Give me that without too many spoilers for the. Yeah. Don't give me spoilers. I, I well I, I haven't seen it yet either. Right. You know? So. <laughs> I was only in a couple episodes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. You, don't spoil it for me. Right. So um, I want to. Well, I want to see it when you're presenting it to people. I want to. Sure. Yeah. Like, so spoiler free. Version. <laughs> yes, sir. Um. So the story begins with William and Fadi. Uh, they're coming off a battle. They fled the war, and they are just trying to flee into the forest for their own lives. Uh, they meet at a river. They know they're the enemy, and they start sword fighting. They try to kill each other. They. Uh, make peace because they realize they don't want to have any more bloodshed. Mm -hmm. But and then after they make peace, they become friends. So then, in episode two, where it takes well, them, your, your your character is on a mission, right? He is. He's trying to get home. Mm -hmm. He wants to go home to England. Okay. Body is home. He's he's in. Okay, so he he wasn't on a mission, but then was when your character is introduced. Right. So it's kind okay. of like Fadi. I don't want to say he's a sidekick because that. He's a companion. Be, he's a companion. Yeah, right? he's, just, he's he, a companion. Because he has his own goals and stuff. He really wants to go to Mecca to get more in touch with Allah. Mm -hmm. God. It's it's something where you, your character is introduced because you're the main character. Right. And then, like, you know, his character will come with time. Correct. Yep. So Fadi sees this as a chance to do a good deed, helping someone find his way home to help him get closer to God. And William sees this journey as an opportunity to not only return home to his own family, mm -hmm. but then to repent for his sins yep. of taking lives in the Holy Land. Yep. So that's that, and that's the whole point of the yeah. series. So these two characters, from what it sounds like, they're they're they've been in danger before, and they're gonna be in danger 
on this journey because they're they're both they're both they they're both swordsmen you know they're fighters they're They're skilled fighters they've already seen stuff and they're going to see more stuff but it's like once my character comes in Dazar, Oscar winning, <laughs> Oscar nominated. Hopefully, you, did you know, really well. you know, we're, we we we're, we're we're trying to get into the right amount of theater so we can get nominated. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> um, yep. once my character comes in, it's like, oh man, like this villager, this guy I didn't know is just with fear right now, right. and is warning me, this stranger, to not go a step further. You know, correct. And, and part of that, what I would say, um, is that Desire, he represents sort of... Um, so let me, let me ask you something about my character. Yeah. Is my, has my character seen danger before? 100%. Okay, so he's seen danger. And he's like, you don't want to go there. Like, right. dude, uh-uh, yeah. okay. He's a plot point. He's not the challenge. He's not the danger. But he says... Um, there's something ahead here. There's an obstacle which, if you can deal with this obstacle to help my people, you'll be saving our lives. But then he's also saying, Dude. I wouldn't do it if I were you because I've seen this guy literally slay people and hurt uh, women and steal our goods and stuff like that. He's yeah, taking dude. food and he's basically telling William and Fadi, save your own lives. And this is a moment where Will and Fadi have to decide are they going to try to step up and do the right thing to help other people? For the right reasons because they know it's the right thing to do or are they going to turn the other cheek and run away simply for their own benefit and that's he represents a moment of choice and he sort of forces them to make that choice to do the right thing and go save their village which is really cool you know and, and that's what i wanted the episode to have something like that and once i arrived at that like okay there needs to be a guy who gives them that choice and it, it worked so mm. well it yeah, because so well. you, um, how many characters do you have in this movie? There are a total of, oh, if I get this wrong, it's going to be embarrassing. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, because I, I didn't, I didn't prep this. There's seven. No, you're good. Yeah. So there's seven characters. Seven. There's Wilton, so, Fadi, Dazar, Katarine, Yi, Anner, and Leon. Yeah. So there's not a Seven. whole lot of characters throughout. It's it's, it, it's very isolated. It's you a know because it's a journey. Yeah, you're, it's when a you're going, it's yeah. yeah it's like, it was just like you know it's kind of um like the um I almost said the Hobbit, but it was the Lord of the Rings. You know where it's like they 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 yeah it's a small group that's going. Yeah, it's a fellowship. You know? I mean, there's yeah there's these two guys who become best friends. Basically, mm-hmm. their whole journey they meet friends along the way mm-hmm. or enemies. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so I I wasn't trying to make that comparison, but I just realized it now. It is kind of yeah, it's kind of Lord of the Rings type thing. It works though, because you, you you the story starts really simple, and then it just like it expands Correct. so much. Yeah. And it's like I don't know. I just thought it was interesting just how like one character kind of expanded the story a little bit there. Yeah. Um, but dude, my heart is pumping because I'm just seeing this this character I've never seen before. He eats an apple. Yeah, you're just ahead to oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm going to the good bits, dude. Um, he's got a bloody sword, I think. Absolutely. That's he he didn't part. even have time to watch it, you know. Yeah, he it, in part of that. What I'd want to say with the bloody sword, it's meant to symbolize that this um, opponent who they're gonna fight, he is bloodthirsty and he's killed so many people that at all times of the day his sword is literally wet with blood, and it's meant to symbolize he has, uh, just been violent in the whole okay game. so my question does he does he does this man ever sleep is he <laughs> does he, he have tells. time because he, he really didn't even have time to finish his apple he just goes right into the next like fight. he can't even snack before another battle comes well, through that's why he's swearing at william and Fadi for getting in his way of his meal <laughs> you know, um, i think that is kind of funny that he just took over a town and then he's just like he's still isolated you know you know so is he also just kind of going on his own journey in a way? Guy is one of the Crusader Knights of the Knights Templar who is there trying to recapture the entire Holy Land in the name of Christendom. Um, that's their official reason for being there. He represents a character who has seen so much war that it's turned him crazy. He's so bloodthirsty that he can't even think about anything else. He just 
kind of represents humanity's worst impulses, where he's just ready to rape and kill, basically, for lack of a better term, which is stuff that really did happen in the Crusades. Yeah, no, there is a lot of mature subjects in for this sure. film. It's definitely... Um, it's mature, for sure. <laughs> for sure. You were talking about Game of Thrones before we started. I did, um, I mentioned what, it, yeah. what, did, did that inspire you? Uh, um, in bits and pieces, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Does, does that setting? Uh, do you do you like the settings in Game of Thrones? I do. Yeah, I mean, it's an, it's a great show. It's interesting. There's so much character development. Um, it didn't necessarily like inspire the plot for this film, mm-hmm. but like just the method of storytelling. I think it's okay. Because so I I did notice a lot of yeah. well in the beginning specifically the um there was like a panning shot of just the environment around. So that kind of like because you you wanted to get them settled into the the scenery of it all. Yeah, setting the scene. Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking through right now. Um, it, it's a it's a pretty like a lot happens in like 30 seconds in that fight scene. You know, the next yeah. minute, next minute they're fighting, and another uh, his neck right he gets, he gets stabbed his... by a short by a short uh, knife. Yeah, Fadi puts um, a knife in his neck. You you like history, right? Yes. You, okay, so yeah. maybe you can answer this question for me. How how quickly did fights happen in those times? Are so, they yeah. are they usually really quick? Do they drag out? I mean, because like that's it's a lot of armor, right? Like Correct. they wear a lot of armor. <laughs> yeah. You were telling me how um how how much that armor weighed, right? How like sixty pounds, maybe 60, eighty pounds of gym yeah on your back. And so, Heavy. yeah, so, yeah, so I'm just curious if that, I'm, I mean, it has to interfere with how long the battles go on for, but it yeah. It encumbers the movement. Yeah, so how, how long did they last? So, um, here's what I would say about that is, uh, with, particularly with medieval battles, a lot of, like, Hollywood movies will portray it as these long, drawn-out, you know, the hero is just struggling on for, like, three whole minutes mm-hmm. with an amazing soundtrack, like, Star Wars, Duel of the Fates level, like, just the blood is pumping. It looks sexy. Mm. But in real life, a fight is fast. Like, there wouldn't be a whole lot of, like, parrying and dueling. Like, there'd be some of that if they were equal level. But nine times out of ten, soldiers have different training levels, and you might go against someone who knows what they're doing, and you might be a peasant who's never held a spear. And what would often happen in medieval times is someone would swing, Someone might block, and then they would just slice their throat. Like, it'd be so fast mm-hmm. with how these fights happen. So um, this was twenty one, seconds would yeah. be a long fight. So, yeah, so I was gonna say, based yeah. on what you just said, this is like ten times longer than a yeah, than a, it's like a battle in real life. Yeah, but yeah. I just thought that was a fun tidbit to include. Yeah, I mean, there's so but, much in it. Um, tell me everything I need to know about the how the production went that day. Fighting, because you you had an action scene in there. That's pretty yeah. good. So episode. So tell two, me, tell me all about that. How do you? Well, let me ask you. Um, was how how overall how has the combat been? Choreo- chore- choreographing all that, like how how was that overall? So um, so episode two uh, was actually the first one that we shot. So that was just that was like the, that okay. Was, so that was the first one. Yeah. Okay. So that but was like, the first one that we shot. You you had to spend a did you have to spend like a different day choreographing the shoot or the the fight or did you choreograph it all in that same day? Uh, we we did have to do some prep. Um, okay. You know this is about to horrify some stunt folks out there. So a couple of years, but <laughs> do you um, want it? Do you want to talk about it? No, I, I do. Okay. I, do. I, I I just I know people are gonna laugh about it a little bit. Okay. Okay. That. All right. Um, we, uh, so a couple weeks before we shot episode two, we knew that we needed to get some choreography done, and we hadn't quite started because we'd just been so busy getting things ready costume wise that we, we organized a day where a few of us would get together, myself, David, who plays Fadi, and then Kyle, who plays Guy, and we would practice some sword fights. And we spent an afternoon um, coming up with some choreography, saying, okay, what if I swing the sword this way and block it that way? And we rehearsed it like 20 times in my family's backyard. We're just sitting there running it back over and over and over until we got it down. And then when we got 
You weren't you weren't using real swords, right? No, just uh, like you're using foam swords. Uh, wooden sticks. Wooden sticks. Sure. Okay, that like works too. Trees. That works too. So we did that to practice, and then when we got to set on the first day of filming, we did another round of choreography practice right away, just to get it down. And then we filmed a couple scenes, and then right before we did that fight at the end of the day one, we did one more choreography practice, and then during the fight, we would often take pauses. If something didn't quite look or feel right, if we thought it was about to be unsafe, we would stop. Okay. And there was a lot of moments where when you see it in the final version of the film, the footage might be slightly sped up by about 25% because we were moving at half our speed so that we wouldn't. Okay. So there's some of that for you. Okay. There was a cool. few practice sessions. All right. But that's right. not much. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to interject. It's Brad's choice if he wants to keep this in the podcast. Just need your elbows off the table. I don't want you bumping the, the mic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Nope. We'll so that in there. I guess we'll we'll add a tidbit here. <laughs> like we, no hands. well no, we 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 went full like gorilla mode on like <laughs> creating this this space for us. Yes. But I think it works. It works. Yeah. It works for what for something that took like it only took like thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean, you know? it's, it's really just the fun of it, kind of like yeah. you were saying. Imagine if we had more time. Oh, could, God, yeah, God. you know, it'd sound a lot better. But, hey, maybe a future episode. We For never, future, never future. know. Then, you know, I like the fact that the viewer is going to get to hang out with us. Mm -hmm. Because they get they get an inside view. They're chilling. Into... Really, they can eat pizza. Hell they can yeah. eat pizza as well. <laughs> we're eating pizza. We're big chilling right now. Yeah. <laughs> and but, I want um, the viewer to get that. Yeah, but how was that? that so that, that was your first day ever prepping for an action scene. Right? You've uh, never prepped for an action scene before. Oh, you've done other no, action? Oh, actually, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. That was not my first action scene. Wow. Okay, so tell me about that a little bit. Just give me a little bit, because we're going to focus yeah. more on the movie, but yeah. Yep, so the first action scene um, that I ever did was for my very first movie, Second Chance, about two years ago. Yeah, yep, 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 those elbows are on the table. Um, <laughs> Second Chance, my very first movie about the military veterans. We had oh. an action scene where the main character got hit by a car. Okay. And we rehearsed it. We um, ran it back a few times to get a, a glimpse of him like falling down on mats and stuff for safety. The funny thing is, is it didn't get the final film. Whoa. Because it, <laughs> when we looked at the footage, when I was looking at it with um, one of the guys that I wrote the script with, we were editing, it just didn't quite look right. Dang. So we had well. to just cut it out so maybe this is, that's why you've been that's why you were doing this project now i know <laughs> right because you, you need some action. yeah you you need you need something with a lot of action scenes yeah. but okay okay yeah, so so uh, so you've done over. that okay but did you choreograph that or was that choreographed by someone else that was improv. oh it was improv yeah. okay but this okay so this was your first like choreographed correct yeah okay okay so tell me about that i mean the choreograph like coming up with that like how do you because the thing i would struggle with is like how did how do you tell someone how to like do it you know like oh i need you to duck and then right. you know it's a lot of um it's kind of like dancing but not dancing it is yeah it, it is dancing yeah. i mean it's it's a it's a conversation sort of. yeah it's okay really, right. that's cool you get you get to the choreographing uh stage and basically it's one person saying to their co-star hey what if we start the fight by me swinging the sword this way okay that's good i'll block it from the right direction then. and then after that i'm gonna repost and swing the sword below like this and basically you say i'm gonna do this and then you do that and you agree what looks and feels correct and then you just flow through it and eventually you have this dance that two people's consciousness blended mm -hmm. to look like what it is mm -hmm. yeah you know what game you need to play Which one? with that description uh super hot you ever played it? Never heard of it. Actually. You ever heard of Super Hot? No. So how Super Hot works is that like it's like a you know like kind of like Matrix or like a shooty shooty type film you know like Shoot. they're all shooting at each other, but you play it in slow motion, so all these bullets are coming at you and you're dodging them, but time only moves when you move, so yeah. you have to move very very slowly. But after the level finishes, it plays out in real time and it looks super cool. So that's kind of how you're saying, how it's like, you're slowing things down a lot at first, yeah. but then with repetition and time, you're able to go pretty fast. 
Like yeah. it's it's like you are throwing actual punches and actually swinging the sword at yeah. like a pretty like I don't know. It's not like yeah, you're not messing around. It's like you're not actually punching, but like you're making it look like, and it, it is intense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very. And then the person gets thrown like ten feet, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's like yeah, and all of this in like eighty pound gear. Oh god, yeah, that was it was so tough. So yeah, what was Just that be, like? Because you, 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 I'm assuming you did the choreo, the, the the practice day without the gear, and then you did it with the gear That's cool. on day. Yeah. Um, which I I think. I think maybe it would have helped you if you practiced in the gear, but you know that's a little harder to get set up. Yeah, I mean, but like, tell me about that. Tell me about that because it probably looked different after you did it that way, right? A little bit, yeah. Because yeah. like when we rehearse it without the gear, it's a lot more free flowing movement. Yeah, I it's just my arms more. It's like you know, like with Jackie Chan films yeah. and stuff. <laughs> but then when we're doing it in the scene with the armor, I I can't move my hands mm -hmm. quickly per se, so like it looks a lot more. Uh, it's actually a lot more brutal. So let me let me ask more you, with all these things you know now about choreographing with armor, what would you do have done differently? Because now you know, now you've you've done it. I don't know if you're gonna do it again. Well, may, we'll see. We, but, we will do it again. Oh, look at that! It's confirmed. I didn't know it was confirmed. <laughs> no, it is. So there you go. So you're gonna you're gonna be doing it again. So what what would you do differently? It's a hard question, but um, I think the biggest difference is going to be I'm I'm really trying to figure out how best to answer that. I think maybe just a little bit more rehearsing but also um Oh, well, I mean, you can always have more rehearsals and more yeah. time. Like that's always going to be what's unique about yeah, doing like well, I think future fights will actually involve even more armor. I I think it's going to be the biggest difference where my Opponents that I'll have in the scenes, mm -hmm. they'll have even more armor than I did. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I think is going to be the biggest challenge. What we'll need to do differently, choreographing with more weight. I, I think that's the best way I can answer that. Is okay because I know they make those they make those running things that people wear sometimes. Yeah. Those vests. Yeah, because this one so... had a fair amount of like jumping in the fights. Mm -hmm. The other ones, the other ones will be very. Static. I'm sure jumping with that was very. It, that that was probably. Torture, yeah, like rolling around on the beach. Oh like man, David, yeah. Um, was very tired. And I, I filmed that day too. I don't know which episode that's in. Episode one. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was make sure you get my credits in there. Oh, I would. hundred <laughs> percent. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Quick heads up here. Oh. We so we're at about thirty three minutes ish. Okay. Um. So well, so we were talking about the movie. Um, and I think we talked about the the big scenes, so we got the big scenes out of the way. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Is there something Favorite, you're dying you, to chat about? Or? Well, let me ask you, Brad, because you sound like you sound like you're a big fan of films. What's the last movie you saw in theaters? Last movie I saw in theaters. Hmm. I don't remember. Sounds like it's been a while. Well, it's just that I see a lot of movies. Oh, you do so much. You do see. A lot yeah, because I, I mean, I in general I go pretty often. There's been periods where I don't go for a while just because maybe there wasn't something that interests me. I I actually I think the last one I saw was actually the Barbie. The Barbie movie? Yeah, yeah that was a fun time. I, I like that movie. Yeah, I was um I was going on a date. Um I was going on a date with this gal mm -hmm. and uh we she she'd asked about seeing it and I was like, ah, all right, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Like, because I'm not like crazy about uh Barbie stuff, but um it was it was actually a good movie. Yeah, it, was, it, 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 it surprised me. There was a lot of stuff in there that was just so mm -hmm. And it was kind of yeah it it did it did things differently and i i appreciate yeah. that because there's a, there's a lot of kids films that they they do it all the same way over yeah. and over again and it's like for like i saw the mario brothers movies in theaters and i it, it felt so formulaic i just it so it's just like it was just a breath of fresh air just having something that was different and it was like it wasn't the most original thing and there was like some it was definitely some dog like the the will ferrell character he was like funny. I, he was funny but like i it, it, i he story-wise there was no point of him being there he wasn't really like a threat or anything he was just kind of a bone he was just yeah he was just kind of there yeah. but um ken oh man he's funny ryan uh, yeah ryan, ryan gosling. gosling was funny excellent actor yeah dude he did a he did an amazing job i, I did enjoy i did enjoy a lot of just a lot a lot of the band itself was kind of, um, okay uh the, one thing um, was they had the same actress 
who plays Yun Ahsoka in the Ahsoka show from Star Wars. Uh, she's one of the children in the Barbie movie, which I didn't know that until like very recently. I heard that. And I think yeah, it was super interesting because, um, like a really great youth actress and um, the Ahsoka show is right. So I don't know that just that was it, it interested me. Like, okay, was, like oh shoot, like. Okay, cool. Like wide range of topics. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a question. I'll answer this question sure. as well. If sure. you need me to go first, I will go first. But yeah, we can what because um no, I just seen the notes that we talk about good storytelling, so I think this would be a good question. What movie this year, either in theaters or not in theaters, have you seen with like amazing storytelling where it's like, oh, oh man, man, I need to make a movie like this? Okay, so I can hundred percent answer that for you. It's a movie called Plane. Um, starring Gerald Butler from 300, you know, the Spartan movie, uh, Plane. And it's literally about a plane crash on a, an island with, like, drug gangs and stuff. And they're trying to hunt down and, like, murder the passengers of the crashed plane. And this guy tries to rescue them. It's kind of like a typical action flick, but the cinematography was great. And the story was so suspenseful. There was so much to it. Like, they actually had a lot of depth, like, it explores his relationship with his daughter and his past traumas and it was actually really well done and i was like oh my god this is such a like there's there's a lot that i took away from that that i kind of felt it had a good mix of action and drama i i would love to end with that okay it was great um i actually have two okay um the first one actually maybe three i think i have three um but my first one my first one um i had it and then i totally blanked on it as i was thinking of it hold on first movie oh okay i remember now it was actually the most recent movie i saw in theaters it was um martin scorsese killers of the flower moon okay have you heard about it or i i have not do you know anything uh, about it tell, tell me about it. so I here i don't here's what i want you to do brad if you have the time i know you're busy with stuff but I want you to learn about the story, the background, like the his history of it, and then watch the movie because it's based on a true story. Remind me the name one more time. Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay. okay. So this story, it's about these this Native American tribe in Oklahoma who struck oil, and that oh. made them some of the richest people per capita. Sure. But there is this character in the movie that takes advantage. Oh, well, actually, no, not just one character. They're actually the whole town kind of takes advantage of their wealth but then still doesn't treat them like people to the point where like the uh the native americans were dying off and they were like this this can't be coincidental like this can't like this has to be murder mm -hmm. you know but no one was claiming them as murder not like it, it was bad yeah no one was in no investigation sure. nothing yeah and the movie follows uh, leonardo dicaprio's character i don't know who this character's name is but he he comes back from the war and his uncle um is now like super duper rich but he's rich in his own way that we're like i think he's like has like a farm or a ranch or stuff but he's friends with this tribe that's really really rich but then he's saying oh like leo i just i don't know the character's name but he's like oh leo you should you should marry one of them i don't know uh -huh. wink wink nudge nudge but like yeah like no but this it's it's such an amazing true st story like i don't know how faithful the movie itself is but just this this story like i don't know why i didn't hear it in school or anything but yeah it's, it's like a, it's about the osage tribe yeah no I, i'm because i'm like reading about it as we're talking mm -hmm. i want to see this this looks interesting yeah it is yeah. it is it, but it's such an interesting film and i yeah. i absolutely loved it the only thing i will say it is long it is okay. <laughs> it is very. It is too. I think it's too long. Personally, some, some of the best movies are really. Long. Yeah. No. It. Yeah. It's still. It's still a good movie. But like, please add an intermission. Please give me time to pee. <laughs> like, I don't want to. I don't want to be right. filled with piss when I'm like. Right. Like, it's one thing. It's one thing if you're watching a movie at home. Like, it, yeah. Like, if this movie was just at home and I could just pee whenever, then that's fine. But yeah, yeah. it's like. I didn't want to miss a single second of the story, and I was like, "Oh man!" And then you're just full bladder. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, like you're struggling to sit there in the seat." I was struggling for a bit, um, but yeah, no, I saw I saw it in theaters. I had a good time. The, well, that's awesome. The, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, yeah. The second movie um, that had really good storytelling 
was uh, Across the Spider Verse. I really like that too. Oh, that, one, yeah. that one's also pretty long. I heard good things. But the uh, Across the Spider Verse was pretty. It was pretty good. Cool. I really like that one. I, I feel like I don't even need to say much about that movie simply because <laughs> just it was that good. Yeah, and that third one, I don't know. I blanked on it. I had a movie and then I just can't remember. Um, but that's okay. All good. But yeah, let's well, I see. I appreciate the suggestion. Yeah, and um, then um, you know, so we're coming up on about forty minutes here, and yep. we're trying to keep it um, kind of within a certain frame here. All right, what do you want to do? What um, What do you want to talk about? Well, I I figure um, kind of like we we're saying, just like a couple minutes of just like straight chilling. Um, that's kind of my question to you is like, what? Um, tell me about something going on in your life right now. Mm -hmm. Let's chat about something. Like if, if the viewers like a glimpse into uh, a good glimpse in my life well yeah, a, to like us too uh well a good description of my life is that for the most part it's very um schedule based like i'm doing a lot of schedule related stuff like just like i work and i exercise at a specific time yeah. i do i i it's very it's very repetitive at points yeah um but sometimes i try to challenge myself i try to um Trying to pull it up right now i can't pull it up do for the you life of me like but structure in your life uh i it helps me a lot okay. it helps me keeps me from making dumb decisions yeah yeah i think so just keeps me focused i mean i get uh, that because i'm mm -hmm. kind of the same way mm -hmm. I, I i like even with like dinner time being around a certain time it's kind of nice because like it helps structure mm -hmm. the day a little bit it sounds yeah. creepy, but like yeah, I don't know what it is but just because um ever since i've had a job with a consistent schedule it's like now i'm trying to make now I'm trying to make my life as like in that way as well, um, if, I mean, that, if, if that makes sense. I mean, like there's still going to be like uh, deviations, like randomness. Oh yeah, of course, That's of life. course. But yeah, no, just trying to be committed more yeah. to to specific things. So like one thing that I'm trying to be committed more is is playing the piano. I'm trying to get get mm. into that, and the reason yes. the reason why I um, wanted to look up something on my phone is because yesterday i did a live stream of just me playing the piano because an idea i had this was this was something where i just i had an idea and i just wanted to run with it where um i was like man i'm like this song i'm like 90 percent of the way there but i, I I'm, I'm still messing up like i'm still not getting it right and i was like okay what if i just played a hundred times and i'm like okay i was like oh but what if i just live stream it so i tried live streaming it and i, I thought to myself oh like this will just be like an hour two hours do you want to guess how long the live stream turned into i'm gonna guess six hours just as a wild guess it is three hours and 22 minutes that's a long time. It was yeah. three, but it, of playing on yeah. my piano. I mean, good for you. Like you're getting after it. Oh, but yeah, that was you just, know? it was Crazy. so long and, yeah. it, <laughs> oh man. But, uh, I'm glad that I did it. It took me cause what happened was I didn't want to take like bad cause I was trying to play the whole song through, but I didn't want to mess. I only wanted to mess up so many times. So if I didn't play it like, the way I wanted it, I wouldn't count it. You have to try again. Yeah, I'd have to try again, and it took. Um, I'm trying to see when I found my rhythm. Um, so it took about an hour for me to like get into my rhythm, and then once I was playing it the way I wanted to play it, um, yeah, it took another two hours, <laughs> and I was also talking to people while they came on the chat. Yeah, but I think only two people commented. Sure. Like, but one person was really like, it's like, oh, I love Animal Crossing music. Yeah, oh, you yeah. should do Undertale and stuff like that. So that was kind of fun. I mean, it adds to the vibe. So people interacting. Yeah, no, but like legit, if I, if I wasn't, if I didn't come here to do the podcast, I probably would have live streamed. I, maybe I, maybe I will live stream. You still could tonight. Still could yeah. do some practicing. Sure. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I think what's cool about, so what's cool about filmmaking and what's cool about, Piano. what's cool about certain skills so something i learned i keep like starting the conversation again so it's good it's good so it's good chatter i know i know but i'm not i'm not like making sense at the moment um i'm trying to make it sound like as professional as possible but it is not going to sound professional um there are certain skills that are just like cool to build up because like when you 
go into your decades and decades it's like oh wow like you spent a lot of time doing this like so with video games and stuff like video games are cool and all but at, at, at a certain point i just started realizing like wow like i'm spending a lot of time on something that like it only goes so far like it, i enjoy it yeah i still play video games but there's like if I spend that same amount of time playing the piano, like, I, can get, I can get a pretty good song going, you know? Yeah. For so sure. it's like, it's just, that's that's been my motivation to do more. Yeah. It's just like, it, I get more out of it, yeah. like in terms of me. You want fulfillment. Fulfillment, yeah. yeah. Like video games only, ha the fulfillment only goes so far it's for me. It's just entertainment only. I, it, it, not even, because sometimes uh, video games feel like a chore sometimes. Oh, I get that. <laughs> um, like lear yeah. le learning the rule, because I'm not, I'm not as a proficient at it as I used to be. Sure. Or I can't spend as much time dedicating to well, it. anything rank. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. Rank games, you have to like work. You have to put in hours. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, been, I've been also having a thought like, oh, whenever I play video games, should I just play chess? Because then, like, what if you can get really good at chess? You know, that'd be a world competition and win lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It'd just be kind of cool. It's just because, yeah, chess is a game a lot of people play. Yeah. But it, video games are starting to become that, too. You know, like, um, whenever you see, like, Mario 64 speedrunners and things like that, like, that's cool. You yeah. know, like, they're yeah. dedicating a lot of time being good at this one thing. And that's yeah. awesome. And it's like, that's kind of what I'm doing. It's like, I'm trying to spend a lot of time sure. being good at piano and hope, hoping that it pays off. Because I did used to um, play it as a kid, nice. um, but then I, I didn't get very far. Um, are you like that with any... I guess, what's your, what's your big chilling? Um, well, um, I, I, I'd piggyback off that same thing and say, like... Uh, are you learning an instrument? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I've, well, I've I mean, I guess... dabbled in guitar, but... Okay. What, I, I guess played you... trumpet growing up. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I mean, for me, it's like photography. Video, okay. acting, yeah. uh, editing video, that's where my like learning skills type of stuff comes in. So it's like, yours it's music, but me mm -hmm. it's uh, like the photo side mm -hmm. of things. You know, so I'm, I'm definitely on that same wavelength, like I love video games, but I'm also trying to just do hobbies to make sure I'm pushing myself to do stuff that I enjoy, but that also might pay me back. Mm -hmm. well, Have you ever sold your photos? Um, or are they all like, you just kind of keep them? Yes, yeah, I have mm -hmm. sold photos. Oh, you have sold photos. I've well, you sold photos because of your newspaper, right? Because that, and also, um, I uh, I've taken like portrait photos for people where they paid me oh, to cool. take photos of them. Okay, so I've done that. You do you like doing that? Uh it's it's fun. I mean, I don't want to do that as like a full time job, mm -hmm. but like once in a while, if someone just wants me to help do a photo, that's yeah, cool. Oh, sure, I mean, I'll, I'll absolutely do it. Okay, why not? Yeah, I'm just curious. It's a good time. Weddings I've photographed. Weddings are, well, it's kind of a beast. I mean, mm. like, it's fun, and you get to see different ceremonies, but, like, it, it drags on. Yeah, I bet. And it's, it, you get tired. I it's, bet. It's long days. Mm -hmm. it's, it's well, days. That's, that's, that's sort of what happened with me in, like, videography. I was like, I was like, oh, if I really want a career out of it, I'm going to have to do a lot of weddings. And I'm like, hard. I'm like, I, if people are like, oh, but you could be your own boss. And I'm like, yeah, this job sounds like it sucks, though. Like that's me though. It's hard. That's me. I, there's some. I there was a guy I went to college with. He did that. He was super. He was mondo successful. Mm -hmm. Like fantastic job. He like has a website, runs a business, had a drone for it. Like good for him. Yeah. But it was like that was that is not for me. That is not my. my like, I did not want to learn about videography to film point. weddings. But no, if that's the kind of person you are, a good on you. It's just like yeah. that is not me, and I learned that. I learned that later on. Like for real, if I would have realized that, I may, I probably wouldn't have majored in the major that I have. I'm glad that I did because I, I met. That's how I met the people I did. I, like I, that's how I met yeah. Brad. So it's like I don't regret the path that I'm currently on. But yeah, like I would have realized, yeah, maybe working is not the most fun. You know what I mean? I like to keep things fun. I mean, I, I definitely agree with that because, like, my full time job doing like graphic design and page design right now, I enjoy it more than when I was writing news stories, um, uh, covering like current events and stuff for a newspaper because it's just it's a little bit less stressful. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's huge. That's good. Better work life balance. Yeah, so. it, 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 that takes time. Like yes. finding finding that good work life balance that does take a lot of time. Yeah, it's huge. Oh my god, we could definitely do it. We could just do a podcast on that alone. Honestly, yes. I'm just like um, we're about to all our weird, all of our weird job <laughs> stories. Oh man, there's yeah. so. 
Well, it's like oh, man. I guess we'll we'll end it with this because if you're li- if you're listening till the end of this, like <laughs> that's impre- that's impressive. Thank you. So you probably would want to hear this. Like we are kind of brainstorming on like what what more ideas we could do for podcasts or like what 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 would be because fu- something that me and Brad need to because like when we make projects, they can feel like it can, it can feel overwhelming you know what i mean it can like it you gotta have projects that are easy to do simple and fun so we we're like okay those yeah. po- podcasts kind of fit all of that and we can theme it however we want we don't know how we would do it but i think it'd be a fun idea yeah because so, you know i'd like to do this a lot where i um do guest stars like, yeah. talking about different movies and, yeah um, i don't know when brad's gonna have the free time but i think it'd be fun well it's <laughs> one of the things like a lot of it is just uh a lot of times there isn't mm-hmm. but it's about just carving it anyway uh, well, I find that when you kind of do that, when you just like, all right, I'm just going to roll with the amount of time I have, that kind of gets you, makes you better at certain yeah. things. I think it, I think not, it does. You're not always going to have three hours to prep for something. Sometimes you just kind of have to jump in. Yeah, you just, that's what you got. Yeah, you, you, just, you just got what you got. Yeah. So I mean, you like maybe because like a pot <laughs> editing a podcast is not hard at all. It's... I mean, I don't even think I'll edit this one at all. I think I'll just you're just gonna, you're just gonna I mean, do. I'm going to have like photos and. I think there's, voice, but I won't, we'll like, see. I won't like cut out stuff because you know I think if people want to hear it, they want to hear You're it. You're uncut. They... Yeah, because like, it's a conversation. Yep. Are you ever gonna have an uncut version of this movie? Uh, are you ever? Are you? Ever, I guess that's the question. That's a. That's actually intriguing. Would you ever have an extended version of this project, like a Zack Snyder edition? Um. Turn it into four hours. For season one of Crusader's Tale, to be honest, no. Okay. Because so every know, everything in this movie, you pretty much it is exactly what exactly what you want. There's not more footage to. Play. That's the reason. Okay. All the footage is there. We don't have deleted scenes. Wow. Otherwise, then I would. Like with Second Chance, the military film, there was more stuff to work with. So like there there were some deleted scenes, but like this one is different. Like literally everything that we recorded, like it is all on the floor. Like people aren't missing. Anything. Okay. So maybe there is no option to do extended, but for season two, that might be. I don't know yet. Alrighty. We'll see. We'll only I mean, know. We'll only really know when idea. that day comes. It's a great idea. For sure. No, I was just curious. Yeah. All um, right. Any ending thoughts? Any any other discussion points? That you uh, no, that um, I guess when it comes to the movie itself, um, just that feel feel accomplished that it got done. I you know, because there's, so, there's a lot of people with a lot of ideas. And, oh my god, just even being able to finish an idea is like, it takes a lot of work. Honestly. Like, that, that's, that was um, with the Animal Crossing thing I was just telling. Like, because that, that was the music yeah. I was playing. I was playing Animal Crossing music. But, like, yeah, even with that, it was like getting, because I, I, I kept saying to myself, oh, I could, I, I feel like I could stop now and no one would care. But it's like, oh, but it's not going to be 100. It's not going to be 100, you know what I mean? True. So it's like just getting to that number. It's just like, yeah. Well, it's, I would say this much, that a lot of times people get in their own way and they mm-hmm. prevent themselves from doing great things mm-hmm. because they get one idea and they follow that until it gets to like past the planning stage. And then it's like, oh, but then there's this next idea that will start. It's like mm-hmm. constantly, I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. We all are. I think, I think that's, you that's have another. have to follow through. Yeah. Have I'm... to. And I think following through is important, even yeah. even if it doesn't turn out the way you want it. I, it, it it's going to make you a better storyteller, yes. filmmaker, and you're going to catch those errors. Like, because yeah. sometimes yeah. sometimes you're going to realize that idea sucks or sometimes you're going to be like, True. well, that's an amazing idea. I just don't have the tools for it. You like, get some of both. Yeah. Yeah, you get sometimes you get a mixture of the two. But yeah, there have been so many ideas I have that I, I still think are awesome. And then it's just like, oh, I do not have the manpower or the time. But it's a cool idea. And you're just going to have more and just keep working with what you got. Yeah, I mean, my philosophy is people owe it to themselves to try. Mm-hmm. So, like, just try. <laughs> it's the big thing. All right. Just do it. Yeah. But cool. No, yeah. I, I appreciate I, I I'm very proud of the series. I deeply appreciate everyone who has helped out. I appreciate your help very much. I told you that. Oh, no Thank worries, you. man. Um, just to, I'm just glad it got done. Same. I mean, I think people are going to love the story. I cannot wait to premiere it, and I think people are going to walk out of that theater very, very uh All righty. That's a great way to end the, end oh, the yeah. show. Oh, yeah. Well, I, hey, I appreciate it. Um, for the listeners, thank you. 
Um, I'll just say this much, you know, feel free to drop questions in the comments of the video. Yeah, leave a like. Yeah. Leave one. It, it helps. Please, God. Uh, um, yeah. I spent so much time on this movie. I, like, I mean, if, if there's anything we can answer, like, let us know. Spread and, the love, please. Yes. It's not even, that's not even my project. Like, it's, it's, it's Brad's project. But so you spread had, the you love. Had I, I had a hand. I had a part in it. But yeah. I just... I want everyone to know where the all the credit belongs to. Don't give the credit. To, don't give most of the credit to me. Well, you, you'll be in the credits. For sure. I'll be in the credits. You know I'll, be, that, that's my credit. Is I'll be, be in the credits. Yeah. You know that you'll. You'll be, see. You'll see what I did. Everyone deserves a pat on the yeah, back for the hard go. work. I mean, everyone but worked there. so hard. Well, thank, thank you. Um, I'm about to stop the recording here. So, uh, questions in the comments. Let's see them, and we will have another podcast episode. Uh, with additional guest stars, so do stay tuned. Um, watch out for more episodes of the series. Uh, watch out for updates on season two because it is coming. So, you know, get interested. We want to share it all with you. Do it. And we'll share it soon. Do it. All right. Thank you. Make me LOL in the comments. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right.